steel maces were used as war clubs in various cultures for much of the last 3,000 years. Practicing with these weapons caused noticeable general gains in strength and fitness, and they have been used ever since as an integral part of strength and conditioning training in many different cultures. This steel mace strength workout will effectively enable you to put a functional loading on your entire body. That sinewy old school strength gained results from functional training that mimics sporting and everyday actions. Some of the workouts exercises provide this functional training while others developed by a myofascial correction teacher KG Kelly specifically augment the suppleness, elasticity and strength of your myofascial system. The terms fascial planes, kinetic chains, myofascial meridians are terms used in this video synonymous with functional chains of fascia and muscle which are involved in certain movements. Here we have the two primary steel mace moves, the mace bell 360 and the 10 to 2. Here the classic 360 move is being performed. And notice how smooth it is. And now the 10 to 2 is going to be performed. So we start to the, the left of the head and then end over to the right. So it's, it's more or less a 10 to 2 position. It's not covering the same distance and is a swing often used in steel mace competitions. If we look from the side, we can see how close the mace is to the body when it's being swung. At the top of the swing, you're letting the mace go so the weight of the mace causes the swinging action. Then you're pulling it back over the other shoulder. You're pushing the mace bell, then pulling it over the opposite shoulder. Here's some examples in slow motion. Again, make sure the hands come down to the waist. And then the other way. And back down. And here, 10 to 2, from one side to the other. And from the side, and in slow motion from the side. And you can see how smooth and rhythmic the motion is. Because you're focusing on good form and breathing, you're not really thinking of anything else, so you've got quite a clear mind. A little bit like a meditation. There are four grips for the 360. Left hand over right, swinging to the left, and swinging to the right. Then right hand over left. Again, swinging to the left and then to the right. Using the different grips reduces slightly different stresses on the body. So we have four different grips for the Mace Bell 360. Now we have the 10 to 2. And we start off with uh, left hand over right. And we do this both ways. Given a total of two and all for the 10 to 2. We can do one arm swings with steel maces, but here's a simple modification. We start off swinging with two, and at the end of the motion, just use one arm, which puts more stresses on that arm. When you've done that with one arm, do it on the other one. This exercise engages a larger amount of muscles of the posterior chain, and also improves shoulder flexibility. When you do this exercise, 
you appreciate just how much of the work is done by the free falling mace with an ordinary mace swing. Now if we look from the back, we raise it up and let it free fall and bring it back round. And same on the other side. And we added an additional swing at the end. There we are. This is a nice little move this. And here we have got some more of this particular swing. Nice and simple. Now you won't have seen this exercise before. It's part of the advanced workout. Watch the normal swing here. And we can see the hands just go slightly over the head and then go slightly below the top of the head. Now, if we watch this swing, watch the hands really high in the air. What we're doing is bring the hands up as high as possible to increase the size of the chest cavity and taking a deep breath in at the same time. This increases the amount of oxygen that's taken in and has a beneficial effect on the chest. Now if we look from the side here, the hands are going really high up. Make sure you don't hyperextend the spine when you're doing this, but it's a very good exercise. To facilitate this raising of the body, it's quite beneficial to go up on your toes when you're doing this exercise. Now we can see here the difference in height Look, look, look at the arms particularly. See how the arms are really bent on the left in the normal position and how they're extended on the right. This is what, re what increases the size of the chest cavity. A really, really good exercise. Move the right leg laterally to the left and perform the mace swings normally. This position puts different stresses on the myofascial system and also causes different stresses in the groin area. After you've done this, change legs and remember to keep the balance 50-50 between legs initially. With more advanced work, by all means change the uh, balance of the, the weight distribution. But to begin with, just do 50-50. In the next exercise, Put the right leg forward, again performing the mace swings. As in the previous exercise, keep the weight distribution 50-50 between the legs. After you've done this, change legs and perform the exercise with the left leg forward. This next exercise is a straightforward squat. It's affecting the ankle flexibility, the knees and primarily the, the quads. Nice simple exercise. No need to go further than 90 degrees. Most of us don't use our calves enough. Uh, here's a simple exercise putting some strain on the calf muscles, doing an ordinary uh, mace swing and going up onto our toes. When we first start using the steel mace, just worry about correct form. Don't think about breathing. But when we do start to breathe correctly, what we need to do is breathe in and out. In through the nose and out. In and out. In and out. And in and out. In and out. Makes a tremendous difference to your form Right, we come to the next section, which is mainly advanced exercises. Little warm-up exercise to begin with. Just warming the arms and the shoulders up. 
You're doing this as many times as you feel fit. And then we'll do it on the other arm. Again, easy to do with a counterweighted mace. Next exercise, affecting that anterior kinetic chain. Just fairly mildly, we've got the more severe exercises later and then we go one step further and we bring it right up high in the air when the fascia is stretched it becomes loaded and we get a greater force transmission so what we're doing here is warming up and stretching the fascia first of all and then we're going to do the movement from the feet. So we're moving in a, a, the correct sequence. Ideally, try to start moving the feet as the mace bell is going in the opposite direction just before it stops. Then you get the rebound effect from the fascia. You train that rebound effect. Here's a mirror image of it. A little bit like a golf swing. That's why all these uh, young children can hit the ball so far because they've trained the fascia from an early age so that even though they're not very strong and muscular, they come through the ball at a tremendous speed. Same in, same in all sports. Now here we're doing it at a slightly different level, more to more waist level. So we're stretching a slightly different um, it's putting slightly different stresses on, on the, the fascia when we're stretching it. Here we're using slightly different leg positions, again, which, which alters the, the, the forces on the uh, myofascia. And again, you can see here the actions initiated from the foot. There we go. That heel comes down first of all. Now, next exercise. This is a, a derivative of a, an Indian club exercise. When we do it, we uh, try to keep the bicep as close to the chest as possible. This has the effect of contracting the chest muscle. Nice exercise. It um, provides quite a lot of stresses and uh, flexibility for the wrists and elbows next exercise uh, a derivative from quarter staff exercises which can only really be done with a, a counterweighted steel mace we're using a figure of eight, and then we're using a figure of eight with a slightly different initial action. So we're coming up and affecting the flexors of the forearm with this one. Great for wrist strength and flexibility. This exercise is for the pec muscles. You're bringing the arm right across the chest before you hand it to the other other hand. And that way you get in a contraction of the pectoral muscles. And we do it higher up at about 45 degrees and it has more of, of a, an effect on the upper portion of the pectoral muscles. Straightforward, simple exercise. Just a little bit of a, a tricep stretch and exercise. Next exercise, a shoulder exercise, something we don't really do. Um, being bipedal, we tend to focus on uh, strength tasks from the front. This is swinging the arm back. We're winding up, moving the club to the front and then swinging it back very good for shoulder flexibility 
here's the mirror view so we have the weight we always have the weight at the back and we can alter the feet as well to alter the stresses on the body now this exercise looks similar but it's totally different what we're doing is swinging the club head back and then using our body to to thrust it in the air so we're leading from the feet so we swing down and here's a mirror view so down and up so again we're trying to trying to initiate the forward action while the mace is still going backwards nice exercise a little bit like an uppercut in boxing Ever skimmed a pebble across a lake? That's what this action is. And it's all to do with the legs. All the force comes from the legs. And here we are using a weight. Great, uh, great exercise this. You're using muscles of the flank you'd never normally use in a normal type of activity. You see how the legs are coming through first. So initiate from the feet. And we go through and feet. Then when we use the mace bell, it puts uh, a lot of strain on this, uh, in this case, on the, the, the left flank. Great exercise. Now I've included this exercise because it's an excellent functional stretch. Now... You may think that the leg's just been swung in the air, but uh, that isn't quite the case. What we're doing, first of all, is swinging the leg up normally. Here we are, and then we're bringing the toes right back when we do it. And then we try to bring the body as close to the thigh as possible. And finally, we bend the head forward. There we are. So it's a, it's a functional stretch of this uh, posterior chain and it also has an effect on the dura of the spinal cord. Next exercise, straightforward core exercise. Just moving to the side, moving up and down. It's similar to a boxing exercise. Although it's a simple exercise, it does strengthen the core muscles, the quads, and improves ankle flexibility for what is, in effect, a very simple exercise. And here we see it from the side. Four or five hundred years ago, every child from the age of six would be learning this exercise, a lunge. But it's something that we don't really do uh, in this day and age. Nice simple exercise. Which has quite an effect on the body, particularly with a very heavy mace. And the lever effect from the mace in this position is quite uh, strong and here we see the mirror image which is just as well because I kind of do it as well from this side but a good exercise and when you start using a heavy mace you'll realize how difficult it is and you can modify the height you, you uh, thrust at and the, the, the distance you move with your legs Nice simple exercise, mainly for the trapezius muscles. And we do it balance and then move to one side. So we're having to, to also to hold the, the mace bell and stop it from falling. Nice simple exercise, but beneficial nevertheless. Now here we're 
call this a thresher. Good exercise. And if we look from side from the side. Now with this exercise, imagine a, a pulling action. You're trying to pull a cable through a wall or something similar. And we use initiating the action again from the legs. This is what has the, the real beneficial effect on the kinetic chain. There we are, a little bit like a wedge shot when you're playing golf. Now I've included some punches here because it's a, a really good way to, to develop the strength and elasticity of the kinetic chains. And here you can see the action is initiated from the legs, from the feet, and you get a ripple effect going up the fascia and then that was the jab and then we changed the position of the mace bar so we've got the heavy end at the at the front and here we've got a a, a hook in action again it's initiated from the feet that's the important thing and then we can turn it over so that the elbow's coming up a bit. And again, the other side. And then we turn the elbow around, the mirror image, and come across. You know, it's not, it's not for, for the waist or anything, it, it's specifically for the, the fascia. And here we've got what you, you tend to call a, 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 a shovel hook stroke up a cut. And again, watch from the feet. The feet initiate the action and the mace bell finishes. Here's a mirror image. And again, you're affecting a whole kinetic chain from the left thigh up across to the, uh, to the right shoulder. Don't do any mace bell exercises in the presence of animals or children particularly these ones and don't do them in any room thinking you'll be able to avoid the furniture and we have the mirror image nice exercise just a, a, an exercise to finish off with not as easy as it looks now here we have the throwing action could be it could be a right cross very similar action and what this does it extends the myofascial meridians from the arm lines across the front of the of the trunk the chest and the the, the abdomen uh, to the opposite pelvis and leg with this functional meridian you can generate a massive amount of force from the body and uh, without actually using the arm and here we're just stretching. Remember, the more elasticity you gain, the more effective the recoil will be with the kinetic chain. And just stretching. And from the feet, yeah. And you just look closely. It's initiated by the feet. Now what we're doing here, we're just warming up first of all and coming through. Now if you notice, it, the action's initiated from the legs. It's a, a great way to, to train this, this anterior uh, functional meridian. Warm down exercise. Very small punches, very small back fist, very small hooks that has the effect of putting an awful lot of blood to the to the arms and we go to the other one straight punches and a little back fists 
and then just a slight hook in action. And you'll find this very tiring at the end of the workout. And then, final exercise, just gripping the large part of the steel mace and moving it backwards and forwards, side to side, and in a circle. By now your hands will be, your fingers will be dropping off. I hope you've enjoyed the video. A few months of doing these exercises and you'll notice a massive difference in the power that uh, your body's able to generate. People using this program do so voluntarily and at their own risk.